Okay, so if you remember earlier, we talked about the new strategic plan, and there will be reference designs, which will be various forms of documenting how the parts fit together that, we can, that can be taken forward into, into production. And there are components, which we just saw some example components. But there's this third piece of the cycle that we generate the stream from, and that's the exemplar platforms. So what we used to call this yesterday were reference implementations. It basically said, uh, we're gonna take all these parts and we're gonna put them together and you could do things differently, you could bring in different parts, but here is a reference implementation. One of the things about reference implementations is it's a reference implementation or a single exemplar platform which means that you made a bunch of design decisions. You made choices. You said, well, there were six things I could have done here. This is the one I'm going to use. And so that is, in fact, describing exactly what the core reference implementation has been in the past and could be going forward. And so I'm going to call out CORD as just an example of an example platform. Um, so the, the, the big picture, again, is there's, there's got to be some value here. And the value is that it's a way of reinventing the edge. And in fact, I'm going to take this all the way down to it's a multi-access edge. It's an edge that can support wireline and wireless, as an example. And this is where we have been positioning cord for the last couple of years, that you can configure it with R cord, or you can configure it with M cord, or you can configure it with both access technologies if you wanted to. Uh, and the edge here maybe is the edge of the Telco Cable Co. network, but in principle, the edge could be all the way out into the user premises. It could be in the enterprise. It could be in Starbucks. It could be at the very, very edge. So we're, not, we're trying to not be too overly limiting there. So this is the, if, if you kind of thought, of, if you, I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm just projecting as to what could happen with, with the, uh, the, the new strategic plan, there could be a reference design around the multi-access edge. And within that context, then there might be an exemplar platform of which CORD is an example of, of one that could come out of that. And so, again, we're thinking of CORD, which you know, we've been working on for two years now, but it, is an it, it could be a multi-access edge platform. And if you stood back from it and looked at it that way, it has a switching fabric, it has a software stack, it has a set of servers, and we, we're going to populate the switching fabric with uh, leaf spine. It's going to have open flow and P4 enabled switches. It's going to have white boxes. It's going to be ONOS controlled. And Word, it's going to have the Trellis subsystem. So here's an example of you take a subsystem that's a, a component, and you load it in. And that component actually happens to be built from other components, like ONOS. And you load it in, and that could become a component in the CORD reference implementation or the CORD exemplar platform. And on the service stack that runs on top of it, sort of similar kind of story. Some of these we're going to be pulling in from elsewhere, like Kubernetes and OpenStack. Some of them are going to be components that we're going to pull in from ONF projects as an exemplar. And, and XOS, you just heard about, and ONOS are examples of that. So this collectively, then, is an edge, a multi-access edge platform. Well, it's multi-access as soon as you start populating it with multi-access technology. And so that's actually the next part of the equation, is this is kind of the core platform. And then I can load in, I can attach to it Metro Ethernet access devices. I can, can, I can attach to it GPON or XGS PON as to do the wireline case. And I can bring in RAN or Eno beads enabled with X, XRAN. So those are all examples of technologies that I can plug into that, that shared platform, that multi-access platform. And on the, on the backbone side of the equation, I can have a Rotom, disaggregated Rotom, and, and you're going to actually hear about another exemplar platform in just a minute that would be an example that could plug in there. So these, these things all have the potential to fit together, which I think is actually part, a pretty powerful part of the entire story. So at one level, these exemplars are just pulling together a set of components, except we don't want to just glue the components together in a way that we can stand it up for 15 minutes and do a demo. This is far to, these are supposed to be exemplars of how this could work in an operational setting. Somewhere down the pipeline, it's going to be adapted to a particular telco's environment. But again, this is an example that could, you could use as a pattern for how to do that. And so, oops, I'm sorry, I forgot to say that we've got a whole bunch of services that we load on top of that. So those are services that run in the control plane, they run in the data plane, and so on. 
The other piece, though, that I was trying to get to is there's all the other operational stuff that holds this together and, and makes it a little, well, actually significantly more interesting. Everything having to do with lifecycle management, everything having to do with configuration and control. So these are elements. If you're going to do an exemplar, you want it to be a realistic exemplar and not just a demo. And to do that, you're going to have to address all these other operational concerns. And so in a nutshell, that is what CORD has been attempting to do. It's not completely been, you know, we're not, certainly not done with it. But going forward, it would be something that we could put energy into as an exemplar platform for the multi-access edge. So I wanted to take a little bit more detailed look at this and imagine, and again, I'm projecting into the future a little bit as to what's going to happen from the tail. T and, and just to sort of flesh out examples, it could be the case that there's a decision to do a, a multi-access edge reference design, and it might position it relative to something that's going on in terms of global automation, which might be its own reference design for all I know. But there's a piece here that will fit into a larger ecosystem, and I've kind of put the, the black box around that. And you look inside of it, and, and the reference design might say, you know, there needs to probably be some kind of local service control to complement the global automation. That could be where the reference design goes. And they, there could be, from a reference design point of view, there could be an argument that, well, we're going to probably use Kubernetes or OpenStack because we're not going to go invent anything else. So you might actually nail some things down, possibly. Maybe that just says infrastructure as a service. And then on the other side, there's a bunch of access peripherals. Um, there's, there would be an XGPON controller. There could be a RAN controller, and, and so on. So again, I'm just I'm showing you an example of what a reference design might look like. And of course, there's gonna, this is supposed this reference design includes a leaf spine fabric. That seems to be a pretty good thing to do. And there's probably an SDN controller on that. And there's a set of apps that might run on top of that SDN controller. All right, very, very hand wavy. And certainly, I hope that these reference designs have more meat to them than this, this one slide. But just to try to set the stage, because once you have a reference design like that, then you can go build an exemplar platform. And that's where CORD is an example. And so now we've made some design decisions. We said it's, whoops, I made, I left off a, a bit here, sorry. It's, uh, we've got a particular set of, service, a set of services. It might include a virtual EPC. It might include a virtual subscriber gateway. It might have included a virtual BNG. It has a virtual OLT. It has a virtual uh, RAN of some sort. And in fact, we're going to plug in ONOS as a controller for the RAN. We're going to plug in ONOS and Volta as the controller for the PON. And I forgot to make one last change here. I'm going to plug in Trellis and ONOS as the controller for the leaf spine fabric as well. Those are some specific implementation choices for this exemplar. And, and, and then on top of that, there would be VTN, there would be a fabric, and so on. It's at this point that the interplay between the reference design and the exemplars becomes really interesting because I might have discovered the reference design because I did a, an exemplar. And I might refine the exemplar because of the reference design to take into account that I needed to include other controllers and other access devices and, and so on and so forth. So it's, I, I believe that we're, what we're going to find, especially with the more murky space going forward, like mobile cord, uh, mobility is an iterative process where the reference design starts out a little bit vague, and then you go do some implementation work, and that helps hone in the specifics. And that's where you start defining interfaces, that you say, you know, it, it is the case that there was an overlay here, and we've got an example overlay. It happens to be the overlay in, in, in Trellis, which is VTN, and maybe that becomes your, your, your definition of that box or something, li or something like that. It's certainly input into that process. So this, what I've just described here is now something that we can build with, in CORD today. These are the components that make up CORD. So not surprisingly, I reverse engineered the reference design from the exemplar in this particular case. But we didn't know what it looked like this when we started. Our picture was very conceptual at first. All right, so that's the components, and they all fit together, and they match up probably in some way or another with the reference design. They just plug in particular design decisions. What I wanted to talk about in addition to that, though, is there's more to it than just putting the pieces into a config file. There's everything to do with the automation of, of the configuration and the life, the life cycle management. So this is just a slightly reduced picture of, of CORN, the exemplar. It's a controller. It's got ONOS and, and Kubernetes. It's got a bunch of control apps. It's got a bunch of VNFs running on top of it, all layered on top of the OCP hardware. So the way that we configure CORD today is actually part of the story of this exemplar. 
And the way that it works is that we pass in a workflow. Once you have a cord pod up and running, you give it a workflow. And this is basically where you provision the services and you say, I want this many CPU cycles and this much switch capacity allocated to this particular service, and I want this service to depend on this service to depend on this service. That's a runtime operation. You can change your mind over time. You can evolve the system by dropping in different workflows. That northbound API was a, is also available as a gRPC API and a REST API, so you could have come in and just incrementally made changes one API call at a time, or you pass in a, a, a recipe, which in this case is a Tosca workflow. Well, the, the deal was, though, the thing that I was controlling with that Tosca is itself programmable because it's built from parts. And so the second part of the automation equation is that we had to tell Cord what it was doing today. And the way that we do that is we pass in some models. And so the Tosca makes no sense at all until I've been programmed to know what I'm doing today. And what I'm doing today is defined by the schema that I pass in as this set of models. And that's where the, uh, the protobuf-based models you heard me talk about before the break, xproto, comes into play. These, this is the way I want services to behave. This is the way I want service instances to behave. This is the way compute instances look. This is the way networks look, so on and so forth. These are the models that define the system. Again, a core set are loaded at boot time, and then as it's up and running, I can load new models in, and that, cha that effectively changes the behavior of the system, and I'm now capable of, of running different workflows because I've done that. Well, those are just models. Models don't do anything. They're just there for control and configuration. What really runs underneath the covers is a set of containers that are running the actual pieces of the system. And the way that we're specifying those in the next release of Cord is you say, here's a Helm chart, which is just a fancy way of saying, here is the workflow to talk to Kubernetes to bring up some containers to run XOS and to bring up these other containers to run Volta and bring up these other containers to run Onos and so on. And so these are the containers that actually implement the services that the protobufs model that the Tosca configures. And again, a core set are loaded at boot time. Chances are I bring up only the core platform at boot time, and then I start adding to it over time as I bring up other services. And I can dynamically load them at runtime. And oh, by the way, I can dynamically upgrade them at runtime because when I pass in a Helm chart, I have basically said I want version four of this service and version eight of that service and version five of this service, and that is what I want to run today. And finally, we have to have something to run that, those Helm charts and those Kubernetes containers on, and what's assumed there is that we've got a Kubernetes cluster. Now, if you already had a Kubernetes cluster, you just start with that and you start loading Helm charts into it. If you didn't, then we have one extra optional piece, which is metal as a service that will bring the hardware up from bare metal and get it into a state that I can start loading the Helm charts onto it. And in fact, what I've just described is kind of a layered configuration system. I start by booting the bare metal. I get Kubernetes running on it. I'm then able to load Helm charts, and the first Helm chart I load is the one that is for XOS that understands how to interpret the models, and as soon as I've got that loaded, I can load all the other models in, and once I have all those loaded in, I can start loading Tosca in. So it's re I'm really building bottom-up layered system with configurations coming in at each of these stages, and I'm not showing it well here, but I can change those configurations at runtime. So that's kind of the layered look at it. The other way to look at it is that we have a multi-stage pipeline, and so we're there's an onboarding time where we onboard services. You onboard a spec for a service. There's a configure time where I onboard a profile, which is really just a set of services. And like I mentioned earlier, what we've just recently figured out is that a set of services is itself a service. It's a nested recursive definition. Those get stored away in, in GitHub, in Garrett, and I can come in and independently version each one of those. So, these services all evolve at different, at different time scales. They don't all have to evolve lockstep. I can, still, I can still punch out and say this was version six of Korg because that's the particular set of versions that I've tested. At build time, I give you a target, and we've got multiple targets because sometimes we build for physical pods, sometimes we build for develop, other development environments and emulated environments and so on. So I do, I do say what my target is. And then once I've done all of that, I actually have something that I can deploy through the process I just described on the previous slide. And once I'm up and running, I can, I can run different workflows through it. And then I can operate that. And well, one of the ways you operate this is just simply to test it. And so when you, what we do for, from a testing point of view, just to finish out the pipeline, is we have 140 Jenkins jobs that run. And what each one of these jobs will do is come in and specify 
a target, I want to run on this particular physical pod, and please load this workload onto it. And that 140 tests, then some of them get triggered every time there's a check into Garrett. So I check in a change to any one of these services or a change to Onos, a change to Cord, it actually triggers Jenkins to run a set of smoke tests on that particular subsystem. And then periodically, like every night, we will run a set of integration tests on the set of pods that are around the world. And we actually control, I believe the number is right, 22 physical pods worldwide from our uh, ONF Jenkins. Every, other people have their own pods doing their own things, but there's 22 of them by my count that get, that get managed through, um, through our Jenkins uh, on, on a daily basis. And they're running MCORD tests, they're running ECORD tests, they're running RCORD tests, they're running all, all manner of different tests and different configurations of pods. So again, there's development time work when I load services on and I, I futz with my service or my profiles. I then do a build as a developer or as an integrator or as an operator. I then deploy it on these, on these various pods and one example of that just to complete the cycle is Jenkins doing the job. So that collectively now is an exemplar platform. It's got lots of moving parts to it. It's not just the sub pieces that we talk about all the time, but it's all the other missing pieces that, that you need to build a, a more complete and realistic solution. So why don't I stop with that, and I guess maybe there's time for a question or two, and then we'll do another exemplar. Looks like you're crystal clear. <laughs> crystal tired. <laughs> All right, thank you, Larry.